Hey, it's Webs here, and it's time to bunker down with Secret Hunter. This was one of the decks that I really wanted to revisit with the new support that came out with the Fractured and Alteract Valley set, and that support did not disappoint me. The deck actually is performing incredibly well, which might be because of the fact that the metagame hasn't been solved yet, or the fact that it actually solved the major issue the deck had was no way to interact with a spell that your opponent casts, but now with Ice Trap, you can actually protect your petting zoos, which means you can actually protect your main win condition of the deck. And with the new hero card for Hunter, the Stalker Tabish, you get ways to get improved secrets. For the Mulligan Guide of the deck, you usually want to keep Mysterious Winner or Tracking in your opening hand. If you're facing against a aggro matchup where you need more answers, you might want to also consider Wounded Prey for a turn one play. Besides that, cards like Dunbalder Bunker is actually really good to keep in your open hand since it gives you one resource at each of your turns. And if it's a minion based matchup, you're going to want to keep Explosive Trap in the opening hand. But if it's a spell based matchup, you want to keep Ice Trap in the opening hand. Freezing Trap is usually a secret that you never want to actually see in your opening hand. Same thing can be said with Pack Tactics and Snake Trap. But if you have to choose between those three, always keep Pack Tactics. The final card you might want to keep in your opening hand is Petting Zoo, just because that's your main win condition of the deck and if you have some way to get a bunch of cheap secrets out by turn three where your opponent doesn't actually trigger them you can actually win the game pretty quickly by just slamming down a petting zoo on that turn with that all being said let's get into some games all right so we're facing warlock we're going to keep the winner and explosive trap because i'm assuming it's going to be some type of aggro deck drawing into the petting zoo pretty good just going to drop down the winner always forget that it's a discover Grabbing the pack tactics. They just pass the turn. I'm going to put the pack tactics down. Next turn we get the ram tamer. The fact that they thought a 5-4 would be a good minion to actually introduce the, to the game is kind of insane. You don't even technically need to be a secret hunter to actually run this card. I'm assuming there's probably going to be some type of secret base hunter deck that just runs this and a few important secrets we're gonna trigger or play the trap or spring the trap i mean and next turn we have a petting zoo the coin is going to take up the ice trap which is kind of sad but it is what it is it means they have a dead card in their hand that they just have to play up one turn interesting to see soul lock back or i guess this would be shuffle lock here's our petting zoo they're just going to use the coin to get out of their hand void drinker it's not something I expected, but it isn't the worst thing in the world. Debating if I should use the Tavish or the Quickshot. The Tavish is probably the better play here. Grabbing the improved pack tactics and the improved open the cages. They kill our minion. So they are Soul Warlock. That's interesting. I'm shocked that they haven't tried to re-support that deck. I'm going to play the Ram Tamer. I'm going to see what we get here. We get a Huffer. I think this is actually one of the only games I ever generated Huffer off of the hero power. But there's a really funny reason why I like this game. Come on, attack into the Huffer. We all know you want to. You fool. You activated my trap card. I get three Huffers and you get a minion back in your hand. And then next turn, I get just a random assortment of things from Open the Cages. All right, time for a game against Paladin. Interesting to see only turn one plays in this opening hand. Going to mulligan away one mystery winner. Drawing to a petting zoo, which is actually pretty good when we have a mystery winner this early. Toto Bane is actually pretty cool too, because that means that's our second petting zoo, guaranteed. Here I'm trying to think of which secret I want just because I might want to take the secret that has the less likelihood of actually procking because of petting zoo. Okay, so a second righteous protector and they're going to hand of a doll which is annoying, but we can just play the opening the cages and then pass the turn because they most likely don't have a way to actually deal with two out of the three minions or they will 
I did not expect a catacomb guard, but they just passed the turn, I guess. Getting all the auric, which is actually pretty good. It's interesting to see all the different Paladin decks that are actually in this set. That people for once are actually trying out. Okay, that top deck would have been really cool. But, as we have Kodo Bane, we don't want to use it this turn. I'm going to get a little greedy with it. Okay, so we are paid for our greediness. You know what? Paladin deck actually is looking really good right now. Questline Paladin. With the new objective spell, that deck actually is quite frightening. Because before you complete your quest, you get basically turns of three threes. Then afterwards, you get turns of five fives if you put down the objective spell. Deck the Innocent. Interesting. I don't know how useful that actually is going to be in this matchup. Cavish. That's actually pretty good for a top deck. Alright, so the traps actually do stacks, which means... We have a total of 5 damage to their entire board. Trying into the second ice trap. They're trying to play their objective spell, but we ice trapped it. And now we get to nuke their board. How does it feel to be consecrated? Actually, I guess this isn't even consecrate. It's uh, soul rend, but in hunter. Going to hero power. The auric again. Going to put the ice trap down. Put the freezing trap, then petting zoo. Drawing into the explosive trap as our final objective spell triggers. <laughs> Varian, um, I'm sorry for you, but this isn't going to be nice for you. Oh, they just passed the turn. That's kind of a shock. All right, we're going to generate another animal companion and have our rifle generate a secret. We can't win this turn. But, Act Tactics is actually a pretty good card to generate there. Alien, okay. I'm assuming their highest cost card in their deck was either Varian or Nizoth. But at this point, I think it was probably going to be Varian. Because I don't think anything in the deck has made me think it would be Nizoth Paladin. Catacombs Guard's going to use on the Mishka. And the Freezing Trap triggers. I mean, they were smart. They played around it. But we have Pack Tactics, so it doesn't even matter. And we win. Alright, time for a game against Mage. This starting hand doesn't actually look that bad. I'm going to get rid of the quick shot just because of the fact that it is a Mage matchup. And getting rid of the Petting Zoo just because we don't want it necessarily right now. Drawing into the Mystery Winner, which is actually really good. Alright, so which type of Mage is this? Questline. Why are people still playing Questline Mage even though there's so many new and interesting Mage decks that they could try out? Drawing into Spring the Trap. I don't know how useful that's actually going to be. I'm going to play down the Ice Trap. I probably should have saved the Ice Trap for a later turn, but oh well. Because something like that's going to happen. I mean, at least it's some type of questline mage that's using minions instead of just no minion mage. That makes it a little bit more interesting, but I'm going to generate another secret. I'm going to grab the Pack Tactics. Interesting. Ignite. Actually, I guess that's not that interesting. I'm going to play both of our secrets and kill their minion. And we're going to do that because we have a petting zoo in our hand. Okay, what are they going to generate here? Interesting. A tracking. We're just going to generate three. That's not the best petting zoo that I've ever done, but it's not the worst either. Okay, so that's probably Ice Barrier. Okay, so they generated a Solar Quick Shot. Well, we'll see what we get here. I'm gonna go with the Wound Prey, just because this acts as an easy way to see if it's counter spell, but it isn't. So we're just gonna kill it instantly. Hero Power, and it is Ice Barrier. That shouldn't have been really that big of a shot. We're gonna use one Quick Shot just because of the fact that I doubt our hand is gonna be empty at any point. At least not soon. This deck does actually cycle through itself actually quite easily, which is pretty nice for a hunter deck. Encanter's Flow. Shattering Blast. Okay. I mean, if you gotta trigger your questline, you gotta trigger your questline. 
the second ice drop. We're going to draw three cards off of this. Get a wound prey, a bunker, and a petting zoo. The petting zoo was guaranteed because of how I built the deck, but... There's the fire cell, which protects us. Then they're going to freeze two of our minions, which sucks. And then they're going to snap freeze. That's kind of a shock. And then trade away the fire cell, which is kind of funny. Now, there's something really dumb that we could do here, but I'm going to not do it. We could have actually killed our strider with the set the trap which would have got us two secrets out of the deck, and then we could have done a petting zoo. But since we don't have any ice traps left in the deck, it wouldn't be that useful to actually do it like that. Okay, it's their hero card. <laughs> they get primordial studies. Oh man, this completely whiffed. I'm shocked that they didn't put some type of protection on only targeting enemies when it came to that hero. Well, we get a bunch of more striders. Oh, I actually am going to do what I said earlier. Oh, right. We did have another ice trap because we generated the first one off of a uh, mystery winner, which actually can save us the game, prevents them from actually drawing. And from this position, we just win. All right, time for a game against Shaman. This opening hand isn't the worst, but I don't want the ice trap really. Drawing into the explosive trap instead of the ice trap is actually really good. Tavish. Tavish is dead right now, but still not the worst. Going to grab the crossroads because I'm assuming we're going to have a bunch of cheap secrets that we can actually play with it. We're going to bunker down and get some secrets. Explosive trap that costs one is actually pretty good. It's interesting to me that the Tower of Secrets has generally stayed the same across the entire history of Hearthstone, even though other cards get way better than they already are. I don't know if that's just because they don't want them to be this overwhelming force that people actually have to keep track of. But Ice Trap by itself doesn't seem like the biggest step up when you compare it to some of the other secrets that we've had. We're going to kill our Crossroads. Going to drop the pack tactics and then drop the ram tamer. I'm curious of why they're running the and the gavel in this deck. Going to play the second explosive trap, then the ice or the snake trap. Snowfall guardian, not something I expected. So it's free shaman, I guess. Which is kind of shitty for us, but it is what it is. Going to play Tavish. Grabbing the improved cages. And then grabbing the pack tactics. Because usually between those two, you generate enough minions to actually automatically trigger the open the cages. Macaw is not something I want to see right now. A second Macaw is not something I want to see right now. Devolving Missiles is also something I don't want to see right now. We're going to use Kodo Bane. At this point, I forgot that the hero power costs three instead of two, which is kind of a misplay, but it is what it is. We have a full thing of secrets. Grabbing the explosive trap. Usually, explosive trap is just the best general secret to actually grab off anything. So the freezing trap is going to make the parrot go back to their hand. A second portal, which is annoying, but it's okay. Wild Paw Cavern. I thought that card would be a lot better than it actually probably is. We're going to get a Mishka and a Leoric. We're going to get an R Leoric. We're going to put down our rifle. And we're just going to race face. There's nothing else we can really do. Because remember, we still have the pack tactic, so we should generate additional copies of Mishka whenever they attack. And we can easily deal with one of their big minions here. Rukon, I actually didn't really expect that. I'm assuming most people are probably going to end up running the hero cards, even if they're not good in said deck. Though getting the AoE there sucks for us, but it is what it is. And a taunt is not good either, but we get three taunts here. Oh, actually we just get two. Technically three total, but not what I meant when I said three. 
trying into the second quick shot. That actually gives us lethal, especially with the third the auric on our side. All right, now that we're through the games, let's discuss how well the deck did and why I built the deck the way I did. So the deck actually performed incredibly well. Sure, it might be just day one of the meta where people are testing out two decks and not actually using some of the best decks possible, but it still felt pretty good against some of the older decks, such as Questline Warrior. With the Questline Mage matchup, you actually used to have a really bad matchup against them, but with the introduction of Ice Trap, that actually helped this deck considerably because now you actually have a way to interact with their spells which is something that the deck was actually missing and with the additional factors of dun boulder bunker and spring the trap you also have ways to easily access secrets early on in the game so you can actually get a pretty early game huge pending zoo turn which is which is pretty good for this deck to actually be able to pull off and for a late game plan you have the stalker tavish as a way to have infinite resources while also being able to rely on some of the secret synergy minions for mid game such as crossroads gospiters or inspicuous riders or even the ram tamers i don't know whose right idea it was to introduce a three drop that becomes a five four but this card is really insane it's so easy to actually pull off even on turn three with the number of secrets that I'm actually running in this deck. If the meta actually shifts a bit towards more big minions, you might want to trade out a snake trap for another freezing trap. Sure, this makes your maximum petting zoo plays a little bit smaller, but that'll probably save you a bunch if you're going against a bunch of big paladin or big demon hunter or something else in the same style. But as it currently stands, I really enjoy the ratios of the secrets that I actually have in the deck. I think this is probably the most consistent way to deal with the majority of decks that are currently in the meta and that were in the meta before the set actually came out. With that being said though, if you were going to replace any card in this deck, I would probably replace the Inconspicuous Riders for Pack Kodos, just because this allows you to maybe sometimes get a rifle off of this uh, as a weapon choice, which could actually be pretty insane. But I went with the less greedy option of the Riders. Both of these minions serve the same purpose overall anyways. And overall, I would say this is a decent enough deck to actually recommend someone playing this this early in the set. There aren't that many expensive cards in the deck that you might not already have if you actually actively played Hunter. The only cards in question would be the Ice Traps, which are necessary, and the Beast Stalker Tavish, which technically isn't necessary, but I do like having him as a way to have infinite resources. With that being said, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and until next time, bye-bye.